Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Vic Slain Hope, and I got another video for y'all. And today we're going to be covering another law on the 48 Laws of Power. And it's law number 29, planned all the way to the end. But before I read the judgment, you know, I got to remind y'all, if you like my content, just make sure you like it, you share it with somebody who might benefit from it, and you subscribe to the channel, man. You know, that's, that's not a lot to ask. I ain't asking y'all for no money. I ain't asking y'all for no crazy shit. Just support the channel so it could grow, so other people get to see what you see and benefit from it. Now, anyway, let's get into the judgment. The judgment is, the ending is everything. Planned all the way to it. Taking into account all the possible consequences, obstacles, and twists of fortune that might reverse your hard work and give the glory to others. By planning to the end, you will not be overwhelmed by circumstances and you will know when to stop. Gently guide fortune and help determine the future by thinking far ahead. Now, this is one of my favorite laws too because I always tell people when you do anything, when you embark on a mission, when you have goals, you always have to plan to the end. Now, I'm going to give you a few examples, you know, like personal street shit. And I'm also going to give you like, you know, some outside in society, like not so street personal stuff, right? So, for example, um... A few years ago, they had this whole Close Rikers Island campaign, right? And the Close Rikers Island campaign, it sounded good, right? It was like, you know, they had this rhetoric and this jargon about Close Rikers Island is a violent place. It makes people do violent things. It changes people. It transforms people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of corruption. A lot of people get cut, violence. Um, this is why you should close it. You should open jails in the cities closer to people so their family could see them, blah, blah, blah. They had all of these things, right? That sounded good. Um, and then they said, and then also it costs this much money to keep the jail open. If you close the jail and you open up smaller jails, it's less money. And then they try to say, oh, and they, you could use some of the money left over to give it to the communities who are, you know, where, where most of these inmates come from. And that you could provide programs and do certain things for those communities so that perhaps if people have other outlets, they wouldn't go to jail. This was like their whole campaign, right? Boom. First of all, violence didn't start in Rikers Island, right? So so the whole the whole thing is they didn't fully plan to the end, right? Because you know, a lot of those things sound good, but when it comes to how are we going to get the money from Congress, from city council, from how are we gonna enforce the whole give us the money situation they didn't really have a plan for that they didn't really have words for that a lot of times even with other things you hear about prison abolition right people that believe we shouldn't have prisons right and then it's like yeah they'll always tell you like oh well you know it's proven that you know if people live in conditions get better then they won't go do crime because a lot of crime is associated with poverty so they got all of this rhetoric that if we just have more jobs and better jobs that people will not commit crimes and therefore we wouldn't need jails but then every time you ask them how are we supposed to get money or get the funding to kind of like ensure that people have living wages and all of these things that they need right to cover their basic needs to be able to survive um they don't know how we're gonna do that so therefore your plan is not all the way to the end right and that's just on on, on that level now in the personal right for example i didn't have i didn't plan to the end in a lot of my situations right now for example um I never thought I would go to jail behind somebody in my camp telling on me. And I'll tell y'all this before in another video. So because I never had those thoughts, I never planned for it, if, if it makes sense. And of course, planning to the end does not necessarily mean that you're going to create a plan that cover every single thing. But you have to have an outline of the steps you want to take to achieve certain things. So because I never thought somebody would tell on me, I never made plans like, yo, if shit go left, I got like like a little stash spot over here where I could lay low, right? I never had a situation where like if shit go left, because if I thought about these things, I would never have brought all these people to my house, right? I would have never been so trusty with a lot of these people. Excuse me. I would have never been so trusty with people. I would have never, you know, moved in a certain way if I had that in, in, in my mind, right, that deceit will come about i give you another example on um, how all of this shit started and how i ended up going to jail right like one of my little mans he, he bought a firearm right 
and they took it from him. Um, his cousin took it from him or some shit. So what I did was, so what we did was, we told them to act like you know people wanted to buy it, so we could go buy it, and then um, we was going to hold the the gun for him, right? So this was way back when, you know. So so anyway, so yeah, so we faked it like you know. So he, he was gonna give us the money. We was gonna pay for it, and then he was gonna give us the money back later on, right? So anyway, we needed like a hundred dollars. Yo, this is how crazy this shit was. I had seventy, and nobody else really had no bread. We was young though. We were some young broke dudes. Nobody else really had no money around. So my man's calls the dude that ended up telling on him, and they ended up telling on me. He calls the dude like, "Yo, we need like thirty more dollars just to get a, you know, what I'm saying just just to get the gun back, right?" So. Son pulls up the money. He's like, all right, cool. I got it. I'm going to put the bread up. So he puts the bread up. We go get the, you know, the gun or whatever. And then, again, this is all part of planning. We go get the gun. We come back. The dude want to test and try out the gun. I'm like, nah, bro, it's hot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit is hot. Just chill, you know? Um, the dude kept saying, no, I want to try the gun. I want to try the gun. I told him, yo, the neighborhood's hot today. You know, back in the days, they used to have them. Then the, the days like two, TNT, right? Like where police used to just be hopping out on those DTs and all that. So, you know, it was crazy. Like you had to really be on point because the police was just hopping out like crazy, right? So anyway, this dude didn't listen. He walked down the block, got knocked with the gun. And then when he got knocked with the gun, he told, right? <laughs> you know, that's the story, right? Um, because I gave him the gun personally. So he can't say somebody else had the gun because when I went down the block, People say he had the gun, but the point of the story is this. We didn't even have a plan, bro, like on some real shit. We never even had a plan. We ain't had no bread, bro. We ain't had no money. We couldn't even get the money, right? So it was just some last minute desperate. And now, because we relying on this person, it's almost like he saved the day. Like, because he he brought the third, even though he didn't, he didn't bring most of the money, he saves the day. And it's almost like he kind of like take over the plan like it's not take over the plan but it's almost like our success in getting the weapon is due to him even though he only put 30 you get what i'm saying so part of the law is that too is that sometimes when you don't fully plan to the end somebody and you plan half ass halfway somebody can come and take your your glory of the work that you put in if that makes sense you know it's almost like when you got a mortgage in the crib in the house and you don't really know how you're going to pay for it. And, you know, you're just going around the way. And then maybe the bank take your shit. And then, like, because, you you know, you can't keep up with the payments. And then, boom, somebody comes through. You The house is already damn near almost paid for. And then somebody buys it off the bank for a lesser amount. You know, you know, you get what I'm saying? So, it's almost like somebody else taking credit for the shit that you already started. So, that's how a lot of stuff is when, when you don't plan to the end. And when you get stuck along the way, somebody puts some pressure on you. I mean, um, and if this, this law doesn't really have no reversal. Um, and it says, experience shows that one who foresees from far away the designs to be undertaken, one can act with a with the speed and a moment that comes to execute them. Another thing is, the last thing I would say is, for example, when Hitler was evading, when Hitler was doing whatever he was doing, um, he didn't prepare to go... He didn't prepare for the winters in Russia. When he invaded Russia, he did not prepare himself properly for the winters in Russia. And that caused a lot of his army to pass away due to frostbite. And the Russian army beat the Germans, right? So he didn't prepare for it. He didn't make a proper preparation to the end. He thought that I'm just going to go into the country and I'm going to take over in, in a certain amount of time. He didn't prepare for like, what if it takes us longer? What if it doesn't work according to the plan? And that's just the purpose of the plan. The purpose of the plan is you have an outline. And in case things don't work, you can always be flexible, but at least you have a skeleton. You have an outline to go by. You know, that's just the whole purpose of planning. When you don't plan and you're just winging shit, like I'm used to winging shit. When you wing shit, you don't really have nothing to kind of like change and alter in your plan because you don't have a plan. Am I making sense? So that's the whole point of this law. You got to plan to the end. You always have to have that plan. And always be able to change. Always be flexible in your plan. Um, hopefully, I said something that was beneficial. Um, hopefully, y'all understand what I'm saying. Um, let me know. Um, but, yeah. It's, it's really no reversal to this law. Um, you just got to have your plans down packed. And it was like you could. And they, they basically said you could never lose from having a proper plan all the way to the end. 
But let me know your thoughts in your comment section. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Have a good one. Peace.